guys and welcome back to another Freaky Friday video on my channel. Today's video is one that I'm very excited to cover because this is a topic that I wanted to talk about pretty much since I first started YouTube, but I never covered this topic before because when I first started my YouTube channel, it was mainly based around true crime cases and this is not a true crime true crime case, which is why I decided to cover this case on a Friday. So with that all being said, let's get right into today's video. What we're going to be talking about today is that of doppelgangers. Now I'm sure many of you have word, heard the word doppelganger used before. I feel like it's more common nowadays than it probably was a couple years ago. Because of social media and things like that, it's quite common that you come across somebody who looks just like you or very, very similar to you. So generally today it is used to describe somebody who looks very similar to you but isn't related to you by biologically or anything like that. It's just somebody who looks similar to you and in some cases is even described as looking identical to you. That actually isn't what this word was originally meaning. Now, today's day and age, like I said, it's often used to describe somebody who kind of looks similar to you. Maybe you could mistake them for you in the streets if you didn't know you that well, but the word was actually created and is often referred to by some cultures as your doppelganger being your evil twin. This is not somebody who looks similar to you, but it is a complete copy of you. So everything about this person is the exact same as yours. Same hair color, same eye color, any birthmarks you have, they have, any scars you have, they have. Everything is the exact same. These doppelgangers are not believed to be human and they are a sign of very bad luck. Many people who have claimed to have seen their doppelganger experience very, very bad luck following this and sometimes it even results in death. So now that you guys kind of know what a doppelganger is, I'm going to talk about some stories and encounters that other people have had with their doppelganger that I think are very, very interesting. The first case that we're going to talk about today involves a woman by the name of Emily Sage. Now, this is a French name, so please feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm saying her last name incorrectly, but I think that is how you say it. But she was a French woman and she had been teaching for most of her life. She loved her job and she was amazing at it. All of her students loved her, her co-workers all said she was amazing, the parents all liked her, she was just really, really good at teaching and she loved it. But there was something strange going on with Emily, because in the 16 years that she had been teaching, she had changed her work location 19 times. Previously, the 32-year-old woman was working in her home country of France, but Shortly after all of these moves and everything like that, she actually moved to Latvia to teach there. And she applied for a job at an all-girls school and her credentials were amazing, all of her recommendations were amazing because she was such a good teacher. But when they seen that she had changed her workplace 19 times in 16 years, this kind of raised a lot of red flags for the other staff at the school. But once they met Emily and they seen how she was with the girls and things like that, they brought her on almost immediately. And in 1845, when Emily started working at this school, this is where some strange things started to happen to her. Now, something that I just wanna specify is it isn't clear if she was aware of this going on before and that is why she moved so much, or maybe a lot of people have reported this in the past and she was getting fired frequently and that's why she was moving around so much. It isn't really clear. Some places state that she did know about this happening before in the past. Some places say that she didn't. It's really hard to go on this, but I think that it probably did happen in the past and that is why she moved around so much. And maybe she wasn't telling people because it kind of freaked her out, things like that. But I think this is the most famous case. But before this, nobody really knows about Emily, nobody knows about her life, nothing like that. So this is kind of where it all started in 1845 when she started working at this all-girls school. One of the first days after Emily had started working at the school, she was standing in front of a class of 13 students quietly writing notes on the board. Now the students were all looking at her because they were taking down these notes in their notebooks. And that is when what appeared to be a second Emily appeared in front of the class and started copying her exact movements. Now, this second Emily didn't have chalk in her hand, she didn't have a pen, nothing like that. She wasn't really doing anything, she was holding just her blank hand, but copying Emily's movements to a T. Now, something I just want to mention here is it is said that at this time, the doppelganger didn't really appear to have too much knowledge of its surroundings. It didn't really take any mind to the children talking or anything like that. It just kind of focused on doing exactly what Emily was doing. Now, after the students had seen this, it obviously freaked them out, and they started talking about it really frequently. They were telling everybody about this, all of the other teachers and whatnot, but because of how so outrageous this sounds, nobody really took them seriously. 
Shortly after the first incident, there would be a second one. Now, in this second incident, Emily was sitting in the lunchroom. Now, it wasn't lunchtime, she was just having a break, so the lunchroom wasn't packed, although there was some people in there. And Emily had been sitting, having a snack, and I guess grading papers. And that is when people say that all of a sudden, a second Emily appeared right behind the real Emily. Now, the real Emily had been sitting and she was eating and grading papers. Again, the doppelganger didn't have anything in its hands, but it was copying Emily's exact movements. The only difference this time is that Emily was seated and the doppelganger was standing up. As time went on, the doppelganger would appear more frequently. Now, after it started appearing more frequently, it seemed that the doppelganger almost got a mind of its own. It wasn't now just appearing in places that Emily was and doing things that Emily was doing, but it was appearing in places where Emily was not and doing things that Emily was not doing. And this whole doppelganger second Emily thing was no longer a secret because it hadn't just been the 13 students now who had seen this and a couple people in the lunchroom. Pretty much the entire school knew about this. All of her co-workers, the people who ran the school had heard many stories about this. Other students that weren't even in her class had witnessed this second Emily. In fact, this was a boarding school, so all of the staff members lived on site as well as the students. And Emily actually shared a room with one of her co-workers. Now this co-worker would come back and say that often when Emily was sleeping, the doppelganger would kind of just be like hovering over Emily's bed as if waiting for her to wake up. How creepy is that? Imagine rolling over in the middle of the night or having a sleepover with one of your friends and seeing what looks exactly like your friend standing over your friend's bed. That is absolutely horrifying. This next encounter that I'm going to talk about with this doppelganger of Emily's is one that I found personally the creepiest. It just makes your skin crawl. So on one occasion, Emily actually had to ask a substitute teacher to come in and cover for her in her sewing class because she had to do something out in the garden. Now, the sewing classroom where she usually would be teaching had a huge window on looking the garden so the students could have the view of the garden while they were doing their sewing. So on that day, the 13 students were in the class as well as the substitute teacher. And Emily was out in the garden, they could see her out in the garden. And that is when the substitute teacher, for whatever reason, decided to get up and leave the classroom. That is when Emily walked back into the classroom very creepily and just sat at the front of the class staring at her students. She didn't say anything, she just really sat there and kind of looked at them. Now if this wasn't creepy enough, that is when one of the students noticed that Emily was actually still in the garden. So this sitting in front of them staring at them was not Emily. Some of the students that were in that class that day decided that they were going to be really brave and walk up to the front of the classroom and try and touch whatever this second Emily was. But these students actually reported that there was some kind of resistance surrounding this creature and it almost felt like velvety fabric. This case is very odd and something to note here is that Emily actually stated when being talked to about this that she had been in the garden. The students did see her in the garden so this actually was the second Emily sitting at the front of the class. But she said that around that time she was actually in the garden thinking about how she would have rather have been inside teaching her sewing. Emily at this point had actually never seen her doppelganger, although she had heard about it from the students and the people that she had worked with. And she said that the only reason that she knew that it was around or that it had been around is because after it would go away again, she would feel extremely weak and tired and almost ill. After this doppelganger started to appear more frequently, the students were getting really creeped out and many of the parents started to complain about this because their kids were coming home so terrified or they were calling them horrified about this entity that was walking around their school. So Emily was actually asked to leave. Now this next story that I'm about to tell about an encounter with a doppelganger, very similar to the first one, didn't happen to a French woman but actually happened to a French man by the name of Guy de Poisson, which I hope I am pronouncing correctly but it is a very French name and I am not French so please feel free to correct me in the comments but we are just going to call him Guy from this point out. Now he is a writer and he decided to write a short story and it was called Louis with a question mark which is translated in English to he with a question mark. Guy claimed that in 1889 he had an encounter with a doppelganger. It was his exact self that he had met and that is what inspired him to write this story. One day he was sitting in his study trying to come up with something creative to write and he was having a lot of trouble and that is when his body double or what he described as his body double had entered his study. Now this body double was said to have sat down right beside him and started to dictate what he should be writing down. And ironically enough this story that he had written 
written that he said was inspired by his body double was actually about a man who believed that he was going crazy after encountering his body double. Even after Guy had written this short story, he said that he stayed in contact with his body double. He's seen it almost on a regular basis. So this doppelganger wasn't something that he only seen once or twice. He said that he saw it frequently, almost on a regular schedule. Now, shortly after writing this novel in 1892, Guy was actually admitted into an insane asylum for being suicidal. And after his passing, it was speculated that he might have had some kind of other mental illness due to the fact that he had contracted syphilis in his younger years. Now, now that can be treated and everything like that, but back then when they didn't have as much technology, it often led to mental illness. Now, this next encounter that I'm going to share with you was actually the first doppelganger story I had ever come across, and I personally, upon first reading it, thought that it was some kind of creative writing project, but after digging a little deeper, I found that this is almost factual. I mean, people either strongly believe in this kind of stuff or they don't, but this wasn't something that somebody had just written, it is something that actually is believed to have happened allegedly. And the person I am about to talk about who had witnessed their own doppelganger was none other than Abraham Lincoln. Shortly after being elected for his first term of presidency, Lincoln was lying on the couch in his home when he rolled over and caught a glimpse of himself in the mirror. Now the strange thing about catching the glimpse of himself in the mirror was there wasn't just one of him, but there was actually two of him. Now he said the only noticeable difference about the second one of him that he had seen in the mirror was this other Abraham Lincoln's face was extremely pale. After this experience, Abraham Lincoln obviously was very creeped out, so he went and told his wife about what he had witnessed. Now, he was creeped out, and this really creeped her out, and I'm not sure if she'd heard of doppelgangers before, but she immediately told him that she believed that this was a very bad sign. She said that she believed that he would be elected for a second line of presidency, but after he was elected, he would pass away. And this was something that really freaked her out, and she talked about allegedly quite often. And oddly enough, as we all know, Abraham Lincoln did get assassinated shortly after he was elected for his second presidency. With that being said, I'm not sure how Abraham Lincoln's wife could have guessed this. I'm not sure how she could have known that. Maybe she just had a really bad gut feeling. Um, with the Guy case, again, this could have very well been a mental health issue. With the Emily Sage case, I'm really not sure. I think that that couldn't really be explained any other way. But in this kind of situation, I'm not really sure what I think about doppelgangers. I'm not sure if I think these are elaborate stories made up. I'm not sure if I think they're real. If they are real, I'm not really sure what I think they are. Some people have speculated that they're aliens. Some say they're ghosts. There's a wide range of speculation of what people think that these things or creatures are. But again, this is a topic that really, really interests me. I feel like once you start reading about it, it's something that you just can't stop reading. And it's definitely a really, really creepy topic that I did want to talk about on my channel but make sure to leave in the comments down below what you guys think of doppelgangers if you've ever had a doppelganger experience if you know anybody who had a doppelganger experience I would love to hear about it so make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments down below